in my view, politics is always to look for the point of least resistance, the weakest link, and go for it. Weak, but also significant. I'm not saying weak and trivial. It's the weak link, but significant. Uh, there's been a problem always with left politics, but also uh, Palestine left politics in particular. That's the one I know, which is you choose the point that's hardest to win and to show how pure you are by focus, focusing on what's hardest to win. That never made much sense to me. Do you want to show the world how pure you are? Or do you want to have a practical victory, which will first be significant? I said not trivial, significant. First, it will be significant. And secondly, from the point of view of morale, it lifts people's spirits. It tells them we can achieve something. We can achieve something. And that gives them incentive to try another thing. But if you keep focusing on the point of hardest resistance and you don't achieve anything, but the people conclude that it's all a waste of time, politics is a waste of time, we can't do anything, you know, forget it. It happened here, you know, uh, during the demonstrations against uh, the police brutality. Unfortunately, these are young people who were very decent, they didn't have a clear goal. Okay, we're coming out in the street every day. Every day, every night. I was there, but I was the only one over 40 there, literally. You know, part of it was the COVID. Uh, although part of it is because the older generations are hopeless. That's a separate, a separate question. I, uh, we, I was there every day. And it was clear we were marching but for what? What's the slogan? What's the goal? What, what do we want here? And what typically happens, if you don't have a good leadership, a leadership which has experience, a leadership which is not trying to show the world how pure they are, but are really committed. They're really committed. When you don't have that, what happens? The people who sound the purest gain all the attention, the purists. So what became the slogan? The slogan became defund the police, defund the police. It was a crazy slogan because if you're home at night and you live in the poorest neighborhood of a richest neighborhood and a burglar you see a burglar and they're entering your building. You want to call 911. That's our emergency number, 911. How would you like to call 911? They say, sorry, police defunded. <laughs> it was a nutty slogan. So, I mean, there were there was elements of it that made sense, which was take a lot of this money that's going for the police and give it to youth programs. Yeah, that made sense. But that's not how people understood it. They understood it as no police. <laughs> okay. Like Mr. Finkelstein, Dr. Was, Finkelstein. So, so the point is, because you're talking about language, you have to select, use a language that's relevant to the era in which you live and you have to look at slogan you have to choose slogans which don't show how pure you are but have a chance of winning winning because what happened all those protests with george floyd they disappeared they disappeared overnight overnight and you know why because people didn't know what we're going out marching for it became taking down uh statues of abraham
Abraham Lincoln. Now, for God's sake, half these young people are unemployed. Half of them, three quarters of them, are going to be evicted come November when the election is over. 51%, 51% of young people in the United States, they're still living with their parents at age 30. It's the largest percentage since our Great Depression in 1930. Sana, you'll be surprised. 25% of American young people between 18 and 24, 25% have contemplated suicide. One quarter have contemplated suicide. So you think they're going to go out every day to kick statues of Abraham Lincoln? Is that what they're going to do? To kick statues of Abraham Lincoln? You need a slogan that can win. So now all the people who march in those demonstrations, they think, ah, it's hopeless. It's hopeless. And you know what they do? They start thinking about suicide again. And that's no exaggeration. I know the young people. I jog along Coney Island, the beach in New York, in the, every day. It's now sprawled with homeless young people who sleep on the beach, homeless young people, hopeless, hopeless.